I knew this video was going to be one of my biggest projects yet, so I started preparing for it months in advance. First, I created a rough digital model of the Bismarck. I then used that to create a number of tests, trying to get an aesthetic I liked. Once I got a look that felt similar to what I was going for, I began designing the other models and ordering all the pieces I would need for the video. While I was doing that, I was also researching for the video by reading various articles and watching documentaries about the final battle of the Bismarck. In my notebook, I created a simple timeline for the video, wrote notes, and made lists of important scenes I wanted to include. I did not create an elaborate storyboard, because I knew I was going to change a lot of things along the way. When all the pieces I ordered finally arrived, I began the enormous task of building the Bismarck itself. I started at the bottom, building the ship layer by layer, doing my best to make the interior of the build as strong as possible so it would hold its own weight once completed and not come apart when I animated with it. After the hull was complete, I began building the upper deck structure. I decided to make it removable. This would help later on if I wanted to access the interior to add shell holes or explosions. Once completed, the Bismarck model was well over 5 feet long and weighed quite a lot as well. For all the interior scenes, I had to build an array of smaller interior sets, and since the ship itself was built at a smaller scale in comparison to the minifigs, I had to build a few sets for all the close-up shots aboard the ship. I began the stop-motion part of this project by animating most of the plane scenes. I made a few rigs to allow the plane to pivot side to side, which helped make the plane look like it was flying through the air. Most of the footage was filmed on a blue screen, since I would be replacing the background later on. You may notice that I filmed the planes without the propellers. I will explain why I did that in the next section. Animating the Bismarck itself was generally quite easy, since all I was doing was moving forward in most of the shots. Animating the sinking was a bit more challenging, and I tried a few ways to do it before I figured out to use a few wood planks and a plastic stand to gradually lift one side of the ship. Animating the torpedoes was quite simple, all it required was a stand that allowed me to rotate the torpedo in a few different ways. I also animated some pieces of footage that I would be needing later on, such as sailors swimming and bricks flying through the air for all the explosions. Overall, the stop motion animation process was quite easy in comparison with my other videos, since a lot of the work was going to be done in the post-production phase of this project. The first step in the visual effects process was to replace all the blue screens with the correct background. To create the sky background, I took a photo of the sky in my backyard, photoshopped it to make it a bit bigger, and then either added stars or a sun depending on what time of day it was in the video. I would then put these behind all the blue screen shots and use some color correction tools to blend the two pieces of imagery together as best I could. Early on in this project, I decided that I wanted the airplane propellers to have motion blur since this would make them look a bit more realistic. However, it is quite difficult to remove blue screen from blurry footage, so that is why I filmed the planes without their propellers. I was going to be adding them digitally later on. To do this, I got a digital model of the propeller and tracked it to the front of the plane. I then rendered it in high definition and placed it on top of the footage. I was having trouble finding digital effects online that would work for this project. So during this time, I was creating my own effects, such as smoke explosions, bubbles, various water splashes, and tracer rounds. I would then add these into my scenes whenever I needed to. The underwater scenes were generally quite easy to create. Once the background was replaced, all that was needed was a couple of my bubble effects and some distortion, and then they were practically done. For all the ocean scenes, I made a 3D ocean model and then rendered it from a few different angles and with a few different lighting setups. I now put those on top of the scenes and blended them in as best as I could. Similarly, for the Bismarck smoke, as well as the other ship smoke, I created a smoke simulation and once again rendered it from a few different angles and then added it to the ships. This was all that was required for some of the ocean shots at the beginning of the video. However, as the video progressed, I was needing to add more and more elements, deck fires and shell splashes for example. And by the time I got to the last few scenes of the video, I was having to compile almost 30 layers of footage and effects just for one shot. The visual effects stage of this project was by far the longest and most time consuming part, 
Not only because visual effects work in general requires a lot of time, but also because I had very little experience before this project with 3D or CGI, which was an important part of this video. So needless to say, I was learning a lot throughout the process. Doing the sound design for my videos is generally my favorite part. Not just because it's usually the easiest, but it's also very satisfying to see the whole video start to come together. Once I had found a couple of music tracks I liked and had synced them up with the video, I began designing the background sound. To do this, I searched online for sounds that related to the particular scene I was working on. I then combined them to create a somewhat realistic ambient sound. For instance, when doing the background sound for the communications room, I got a lot of radio and electrical sounds, which when combined, sounded quite good. When the background sounds were complete, I moved on and started adding the individual sound effects. All this entailed was pausing the video when an action is about to happen, adding in a sound at that spot, playing it back, and then adjusting it if necessary. If I couldn't find a sound online that would match, I would either try to mix a few different sounds together to create a new sound that fits, or manipulate a similar sound by changing the pitch or length of it. Once the sound design was finished, it was then time for the final touches, which included both adjusting the colors and lighting so that all the shots would match throughout the whole video, and also adding a little camera shake to each shot, while adding a bit more shake whenever there was an explosion or something to light. The latter addition really makes the shots look more realistic and suspenseful in my opinion, and adds a lot of impact to the more explosive scenes. With this done, all that was left to do was review the video, fix any small mistakes that I missed, export it, and upload it to YouTube. And now, after months of work, my biggest and probably hardest project yet was now complete.